Hi there guys, you are watching Biology with Insure. So in this video, we are going to talk about the transport in humans. And this is for both O-levels and IGCSC. So whether you're doing IGCSC or you're doing O-levels, um, either way you can watch this video. It's covering every, it will cover everything as per your syllabus, right? So I have this request from someone. Um, someone in particular requested um, for this chapter on my Facebook page first. So for that particular person, I have decided to make um, some videos to complete this chapter. So of course, it's not possible to complete the full chapter in one video as this chapter is a bit technical, slightly hard, and, but not impossible and huge, right? Nonetheless, I'll complete this for that particular person. So if you guys want me to make any videos for you, let me know the topic in the comment section down below, um, whether you're watching on Facebook or um, YouTube, right? So anyways, let's get started. So I'll do my best to complete this chapter um, as fast as I can, right? But then again, it takes time to make these videos and record them and to convert them and stuff like that. However, I will keep on doing it for you guys. So share this around and stay tuned for more amazing and free content, right? Let's get started then. Alright, so guys, before we start, uh, before we start, I just want to introduce you to, the, to this chapter. So this chapter deals with transport in humans. So it's basically your heart, your blood. Like how does that transport system work? Your blood delivers substances, nutrients, oxygen around the body, right? Suppose um, you want to get to school. You need to you know, you need a medium to get to school, right? So there's a transport system. That transport system could either be your parents' car, maybe your own car, maybe the school bus. So there are different transport systems. So this is basically the same thing as applying here. Um, the blood needs a medium. Sorry, um, substances and nutrients. That's what I meant. Substances and nutrients need a medium to get transported. And that is done with the help of blood. Right? So this, it is the blood that helps with the transportation, and we're going to understand how that works, including the structure of the heart, and that will come very gradually, so don't worry about that, okay? Okay. So first, in the first part of this chapter, we're going to talk about your blood vessels, what they do, their characteristics, and their type. Okay. So first, you have your capillaries right so capillaries are basically the smallest right they are very thin the thinnest the smallest vessels that basically allow exchange of substances now let me elaborate when I say exchange of substances guys let's first uh, consider this to be your uh, capillary okay maybe the red part represents blood maybe there's some oxygen dissolved in the blood right some nutrients like your amino acids, your your glucose, you know the digested stuff that your body needs. So for instance, um, this useful matter, and this is maybe your cell, right? Let's con consider this to be your cell, right? Cell needs basically oxygen and nutrients and stuff to respire, for, for growth and stuff. So maybe the oxygen and the nutrients, like, enter the cell, right? And the cell uses those materials and then makes some waste products. Like, for instance, it's using the oxygen for respiration, and uh, including the glucose is also being used for respiration, and producing some waste products, like, let's say, carbon dioxide and water. That needs to be um, removed from the cell to ensure that it is not harmed. So that is basically removed, and when it is removed, it basically enters your vessels, your blood vessels. And then this blood here carries it away where it needs to be removed like if we talk about oxygen it's travel to the lungs where you breathe it out where you exhale and stuff like that when you talk about water it goes to your kidneys where it is filtered and then there's a that's a new chapter by the way so we'll talk about that in when i make the video on your excretory system but just get the rough idea this is what it means when i say exchange of substances right this is the whole scenario here get the rough idea guys our endothelium Okay, well, this is a bit of a fancy word, and if uh, you're a bit naive or a bit fearful, you might get scared from just by hearing this word. But fear not, I'm going to make it very clear. It's very easy. Endothelium means selectively permeable. Now, you can say your capillaries are quite choosy. They actually don't let everything enter in or exit. They basically decide selectively what particular thing is needed at the moment. That's called being smart, by the way. So these guys here form branches. This is uh, actually quite important. These can come in your MCQs, so just be mindful of this. They form bra branches, and um, this is this is a branch. See, just look at the finger that I'm pointing at. This is like your branch, like the branches of a tree. 
Now, what are the benefits of this branch? Then again, this will come in your paper too, both O level and IGCSE guys. This here provides a large surface area, okay? And when you know that there's a large surface area, um, the blood pressure is lowered, right? So basically, the artery are, uh, sorry, your capillaries, sorry, capillaries are so thin that the blood pressure has to be kept low. If the, if the blood pressure increased means the blood is traveling at a very fast rate, they will explode, they will burst, right? This is a mechanism to keep in mind. Um, so basically, in, in, in summary, your blood capillaries are, is, is a network of microscopic vessels that link an, an artery and a vein. These are blood vessel, uh, sorry, capillaries that links a vein with an artery, okay? There is one cell thick, then again, which provides, they're thin. This basically, um, okay, some people get confused when they hear about this. But I'll clear this out just right now. When I say they are one cell thick, what I mean is that they're thick, sorry, thin. Um, so whenever I hear the word that um, there's something one cell thick, it's basically thin, just like the villi of your small intestine. In the books, in your class, you must have heard that they are one cell thick. This means that they are thin. And when they're thin, it has a greater surface area. And when it has a greater surface area, the absorption rate or the rate of movement is faster. The rate of the exchange of the substances between the cell and the vessel is faster. Okay, this is much more efficient. Things happen faster in your body, right? That's what needs to be done in your body. Things need to, hap things need to happen fast enough. So then again, the blood vessels, uh, the capillaries um, take in nutrients and they remove waste products like carbon dioxide and water. And they have no valves. Remember this, there are no valves present. Just one thin tube going your way with nothing present inside except for some liquid blood. Now, just have a look at this diagram here. This is your capillary. Um, just have a quick scan of the diagram. This here is your capillary. The blue region is your vein. Red represents your arteries. Your capillary is basically the branch, branch, and the thin ones that connect this vessel with this vessel. Okay. Okay. So that's pretty much it for your um, capillaries. Now moving on with the next blood vessel, which is your vein. So in the vein, the blood pressure is relatively lower. Okay. And uh, the thing is, your veins aren't so Thick. They are also slightly thin. Well, not as thin as capillaries. Capillaries are more thin. Veins are slightly thick, but again thin. Due to being thin, the blood pressure needs to be kept low here as well to prevent it from bursting. Okay. So the benefit of here is that since the blood pressure is low, the blood can flow smoothly and nicely, like smoothly and slowly. Like, you know, whenever there's a lot of pressure on you and things need to be get things need to be done faster, right? There's this point pressure on you, get this done now, faster, 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 but no. Things are pretty smooth and relaxed here. You know, the blood pressure is low and the blood takes its time, nice and smooth and slow. Right? That's a trick to remember that. So then again, not so thick or do not are not so muscular like your arteries. They're not that strong. Your arteries are much stronger. They're more muscular. Arteries are like, you know, those guys who have, like, um, huge muscles and have a great body and stuff. That's the example of your artery. Contains elastic tissues and has a semilunar valve. Well, your vein has some valves present inside. And it is elastic. Your vein is stretchable. It can... Uh, so these are elastic tissues present inside your veins that makes it stretch stretchable, flexible, and then there's some valves present. And the names of those valves are semilunar valve. Now we're going to have a look at your um, vein. And now veins are generally shown by the blue color. But don't get the idea that your blood in the vein is actually blue. Blood is always red, whether in your veins, whether in your capillaries, whether in your arteries. Yes, it's slightly blue. Vein is blue because it carries deoxygenated blood. The blood in which there is no oxygen, right? The oxygen has been used up. So that is why it appears to be blue. The vein carries um, blood basically um, towards the heart, right? It carries blood towards the heart so that the heart can pump the blood to the lungs. And where, when it reaches the lungs, it can grab and absorb some blood and then be pumped to the arteries and then the arteries can pump the blood around the body. Now I'm sure that must have passed your head and like what the 
what did I just say? Don't worry about that. In one of the next upcoming videos, I'll talk about that in more detail with some written things and some diagrams and stuff. But for now, let's study the vessels because this is what should be our main focus. This is your vein and uh, these are your valves here that I'm highlighting here. And uh, basically, what is the function of these valves? Well, let me explain. This is your valve right here. This is the inner, inner layer of your, and then there is this elastic layer. Okay, so elastic layer is in the artery. Sorry, my bad. I uh, highlighted it by mistake. Yeah. So uh, inner layer is also present in your arteries, and then there's a muscle layer present in both, and then there's an outer layer present in both. Right now, what do these valves do? Now, these valves have a significant role that you need to understand. Basically, um, they actually decide the direction. They actually maintain the um, direction of blood flow. For example, they ensure that blood flows in one particular direction, and that the blood does not flow backwards. If if it were to flow ba backwards, that would be fatal. That would be dangerous. It's not healthy. Uh, these valves are needed to prevent blood from flowing in the wrong direction like if the blood in the vein flows towards the heart it the valves prevent it from flowing away from the heart because that's what your arteries do sorry so you need to remember that and also this they give this a pushing factor you know like these valves are present here and then they're giving this a pushing factor to ensure that blood flows straight right straight with like great force and it flows like one of these pushes is more than enough to enable blood flowing around the full body. So just get the idea that's what the job of your valves is. Now your arteries are, they basically carry bl blood away from the heart. Basically they carry oxygenated blood, blood containing oxygen. And since it carries, it, it pumps it away from the heart, it goes around the body to different cells, where the, to the cells that need the blood um, containing your oxygen and nutrients so that they can be used up. Once they're used up and there is no oxygen, the veins carry it back to the heart. So they are thick, unlike your veins, unlike your capillaries, they are thick, muscular and also elastic. Right? There are some similarities between the vein and arteries, they both are elastic. They're muscular, strong. So then again, uh, blood pressure must be great here, right? Since they're so strong. They're thicker. Okay, uh, leave this point now. I'll explain it in one of the upcoming slides. But just understand that aorta air is thicker. Your aorta is thicker. And your arterioles are your capillaries. Like they're smaller. So aorta is thicker. So they receive blood directly from the heart. That is what I just told you. And can stretch and coil. That can help push blood along. Now these don't have any valves inside, right? Since they don't have any valves inside, what is that? Thing present, a muscle needs to be there to push the blood along. So basically, uh, they don't need valves. They're so strong and independent um, that they can push the blood along with the help of their internal muscles. Their internal muscles are more than enough. Veins are weak, so they need help of valves. Carries oxygenated blood. Now you can just have a look at this diagram here. It's a much simpler diagram. Okay, so let's first understand something a bit more okay so basically what happens is that first let's start with the heart so the arteries are represented by the red and the veins are represented by the blue so the artery so what happens is that the heart pumps blood through the arteries uh, to the body so when the body what it does is that it uses the blood it uses the blood nice and well the oxygen and the nutrients and then it becomes deoxygenated the blood is now useless containing waste products so now the veins carries the waste back to the heart so the ways veins have carried it back to the heart what the heart does is that it pumps this waste of blood to the lungs so where carbon dioxide is removed when we exhale our carbon dioxide is removed right and then the lungs pick up uh, the blood in the lungs pick up oxygen because we're inhaling oxygen the oxygen is picked up some nutrients are picked up on the way and then the, this is um, pumped back to the heart and once pumped back to the heart the heart pumps it around the body once more and this cycle repeats okay so when I said I wanted to talk about your um, aorta veins and stuff it's very simple it won't take like two to three seconds to explain that first you have your capillaries the smallest one right these are your capillaries and look at the cursor basically arterioles are basically like capillaries they're very thin arterioles like you can see here combine together to form your arteries like these are your arteries like right? and then arteries 
combine together to make even thicker um, vessels ca called aorta. See how thick your aorta is. So arterioles are like your capillaries, thin, combining to form your arteries, which are slightly thicker. And when many arteries combine to form your aorta, what happens is with your um, it's similar for your veins, but the terminology used different. So v venules are like your capillaries, thin, and they're blue in color. So they combine to form your veins. And then veins combine together because they're slightly thick to form your vena cava. Vena cava is very, very thick. Just remember these terms are going to come up ahead in the next uh, upcoming uh, topics of this. Like this, this, is actually, this is actually simple. It will get a bit more complex in the upcoming topics. So don't worry about that. I'm going to cover that up. Okay, guys, that's it for today. Um, so we have successfully covered the blood vessels and their types and their diagrams and some of the basic things that you need to understand. Do like and uh, follow and share this if you're watching this on Facebook and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Like and uh, share this around if you're watching this on, on my YouTube channel. Comment down below. I'll do my best to complete this as fast as I can, right? I'll be making videos and fast paper question videos and the microscopy part of your AS level is up next. Stay tuned. Share this around and as always, keep learning. See you next week.